name is Bill Bradley. I'm an extreme endurance athlete. The topic of the day's video is sometimes you need to go it alone. I'm out at uh, Doran Beach. I just finished an uh, hour and a half, uh, you know, hiking in the sand, a little bit of running, mostly hiking with my uh, sled, practicing for. Um, Arrowhead and Tuscobia, where I got a hundred and you know, Tuscobia is 160 miles, and Arrowhead's a 30, 135 miles. Where you pull a sled with your survival gear. And so, anyway, what I want to talk about because this made me think about it, I was just out here tonight. But when I was out here last time, last week, I got out of here a little later than this, it was like really getting dark, and a guy was dragging his kayak in. It's crabbing season, right. So these guys go out, you know, people on boats, but then these, these guys go out with kayaks and put their crab pots down. I guess they're called pots. I'm not sure. Anyway, they put their crab things. <laughs> I don't want to get too technical. <laughs> and we put their crab things in the water and then they, you know, and they, you know, and they're trying to catch crabs out there. And the guy goes, he came in. I remember he came in last week. And he goes, yeah, it was starting to get a little rough out there, you know, kind of dicey. He goes, you know, I don't do this a lot, you know. He said, uh, yeah, I can't get, I can't. My friends all say they're going to come and then none will come out. <laughs> I go, yeah, you ever, I go, I have the same problem. <laughs> I go, you know, here you're, you're trying to get people to, kayak out into the ocean in the middle of winter to go after crabs. Yeah, it might not be for everybody. You know, a lot of my training, well, you know, the majority of it is by myself because, you know, who am I going to get to come out and do an hour and a half sled pull on the beach in the sand, you know? Uh, there's not, not going to be a lot of takers. I remember the first time I learned this, I was so excited I got accepted into RAM, you know, the race where you, you bike across America. And, uh, you know, it's considered the world's toughest bike race. And I was so fired up. And I wanted to do this 150-mile ride that I had uh, I had done the Terrible 2, which is, which is con at the time was considered one of the toughest 200-mile bike races. Ride. Yeah, it's a, I guess it's a ride. It's not a race. It's got cutoffs and stuff. But um, in the country, super hilly. And I remember we were doing a practice ride. We did half of it. We went out this road. It's called Skag Springs Road. It's just up and down these steep climbs all the way out to the coast, right? And so as we were going out there, there were people coming back. And they told, they told, they said, hey, what'd you guys do? They go, they go, we did a double Skag Springs, right? And so these guys who are badasses, who are doing the terrible two veterans of it, were like, wow, those guys are doing a double Skag Springs. That's amazing. So I made this mental note about it, right? You know, you know, I love when I hear that stuff. So then I'm like, as soon as I got accepted into Ram, I go, man. I'm gonna celebrate, I'm gonna do a double Skag Spring because I, I must be a badass. I got accepted in the Ram, that's what I'm thinking to myself. I, got, I better go prove to myself I'm a badass. And so I went down to the bike shop. I go, hey, you guys, I'm gonna go do a double Skag Spring. It's like 150 miles from my house. Who would wanna do this with me? Who do you think would wanna do that with me? And the guys in the shop both answered together. They go, Bill, we ride a max of like 50 miles out of the shop because that's a shop they organize a lot of rides at the time. Because we ride a max of about 50 yards. I mean, 50 miles out of this, you know, out of out of here, our rides. Nobody. We don't know anybody who would want to do a double skag springs with you. So remember, so I did it on my own, and I didn't taper for it. I was tired. I'd been training a lot. <laughs> And I rode all the way out there. I thought I was going to do it so fast and finish, you know, in the daylight. And I didn't bring a light. I brought a little light, little emergency like It was like a little pin light. And uh, I got out to the coast and I was like, whoa, this is hard. <laughs> so I was halfways and I was, and I, and I was, you know, I had just gone through a divorce and everything. And I was grateful that I had nobody to call. And I didn't think I had reception out at the coast anyway, because I was so bonked. I would have called 
anybody to come pick me up probably. I was weak, but you know what? I didn't have anybody to call and I got on my bike and I rode all the way back up those hills bonked and I got home at 1 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> no wonder nobody at that bike shop wanted to do a double skag spring with me, but I have done a double skag spring. <laughs> it was kind of tough. <laughs> anyway, so sometimes, like my buddy who's the crab fisherman with the kayak, you got to go it alone, man. If nobody's going to do a race with you, if nobody's going to do the training with you, if you want to do it bad enough, do it alone. Even if you got to finish at 1 a.m. in the morning, with a pin light. <laughs> Eye of the tiger. <laughs>